Over the years, Veeam has become known as the industry leader in virtual machine data protection. Whether your hypervisor of choice is VMware, Microsoft Hyper-V, and even more recently, Nutanix AHV. That said, there have been a few changes over the past couple versions of Veeam with regards to backing up your virtual machines. Let's take a look at exactly what the process looks like to configure a backup job to protect your VMs and highlight a few of those key changes that you need to be aware of. Okay, now that we're in the lab, let's take a look at some of the settings that you're going to find when you first start creating your VM backup jobs. To get started, you can create a job in one of two ways. You can either go to the top ribbon menu and locate your backup job button, click on this, choose virtual machine, and then it will break out for you the different hypervisors that are present in your environment. In this case, you can see we have vSphere, we've got Hyper-V, and we even have VMware vCloud Director. Now, if you happen to run a Nutanix hypervisor deployment, you'll see that a little ways down below. Now, in this case, we would choose VMware vSphere to go through this example because we'll be showing you guys an example with VMware. Or you can simply go out here to the white space area in your main backup and replication console, right click, choose backup virtual machine, and the same thing exists here. Now in this case, I'm just gonna edit one of these existing jobs to show you what it looks like completely built out. Now if we zoom in here on the main window, one of the things that may jump out at you that's a relatively new enhancement is this checkbox at the bottom that says high priority. Now, as you can read in the tooltip there right below it, essentially this is going to put, as it says, a higher priority on this particular job where other Veeam resources will be prioritized to making sure every VM in this particular job gets protected. So you'll want to leverage this capability sparingly and use it for your most mission critical workloads. You certainly wouldn't want to enable it for every single job or it serves no purpose. So make sure you check this when you're looking at your most critical workloads. You can give the job a name, you know, put it in the description if you like. And when you go to virtual machines, this is where you're choosing what it is you're going to protect. Now, in this case, you can see here we've chosen a few individual VMs, but you have quite a few different ways that you can do this. And if you'll notice these icons across the top, this is really where you can get creative and almost create a policy based backup job based on different organizational units that may exist within your infrastructure. You can do hosted clusters, which is your typical view, and this lets you expand out and see host and clusters and ultimately virtual machines. So if you look down, you can see some examples here just under VCD. Now, you could choose any one of these containers. So you could choose, for an example, the entire cluster, and we'll get everything under the cluster. You could choose a host and we'll back up only the VMs that run on that host at that time, which can get a little um, uncertain if you've got things like vMotion enabled. So that's generally not the recommendation. Or you could go all the way down and manually specify a VM. Now other options, if you click on VMs and templates. So here you can drill all the way down and now you can choose a folder you can keep going down and choose individual VMs underneath those folders if you like, or you can actually hold down control and manually choose which ones you want to grab. You can also choose by data store, so you get the idea. We're changing the view. Now, arguably, one of the most useful ways to prioritize this is using VMs and tagging here, because now you can create a tag inside vSphere and Veeam will automatically enumerate all that so that when you actually build out a job, you can do it based on tags. And a single VM may have a use case to have multiple tags, therefore be backed up in multiple jobs that have different retention policies for different use cases. And you can also see tags combination. So again, very flexible with what it is you're choosing to protect. You can also go through and enable exclusions. So if you grab a large container such as a folder and you want to exclude certain VMs from this particular job, you can easily do that with your exclusions. Now the next tab is under storage. This is simply where you're going to be sending your backups to as well as which proxy you want to choose to do the heavy lifting, the deduplication, the compression, and so on. Now in this case, you've also got a retention policy that you can enable. 
some of the newer enhancements that have come in recent versions of Veeam Backup and Replication is you no longer have to choose restore points, but you can now choose days. Because in the past, you had to do a little mathematics if you were trying to figure out how many restore points equal a day if I'm running the job every two hours or every four hours, for an example. So now we've made it much easier. You can simply choose days. So one of the other things that may look a little different to some of you, because remember, this is a regular backup job, not a backup copy job. One of the things you'll notice is we've actually introduced GFS, our grandfather, father, son functionality in the regular backup job. Yes, you can still leverage that in the backup copy job, but now in the traditional backup job, you have an option of using GFS points. Now, you may notice we've also deprecated the quarterly option because not many of our customers we found were using that. So you can do full weeklies, monthlies, or yearlies, or a combination of those as you see here, and you can specify which days those get created. You can even save this as the default so all newly created jobs will leverage these settings that you see here. Now you do still have the option to enable a secondary destination. So if you want to link this to say a backup copy job, you do have that functionality. If you want to go into some of the advanced settings and tweak the job statuses, such as notifications, if you want to do forward incremental, reverse incremental, if you want to enable synthetic fools and so on, you can take advantage of all the settings under the advanced button. And arguably that's another video all by itself. Guest processing. So, and this, by the way, this pop up here is just letting you know, by the way, we're targeting a deduplication appliance. So there are certain considerations that you need to take into account. And if you want to read that, we even provide you a KB article where you can go directly there and read those best practices. And if you don't want to see the pop up anymore, simply check the box. Now, when you look at guest processing, this is where application aware image processing comes in. Very critical for highly transactional workloads, such as Exchange, SQL, SharePoint, so on. You also have the ability to index your guest file system. So if you needed the ability to search and locate a single file, you have that option. You also have settings for your guest interaction proxies, your guest OS credentials. You have the ability to do some testing right now before you even run the job to make sure that what you've plugged in is in fact the appropriate credentials. And then finally, you come to the scheduling interface. And this is a, a very familiar scheduling engine. Uh, we've been using this for several iterations of the product. You've got daily, you've got monthly, you've got periodic, you can daisy chain. You can terminate the job if it exceeds a predetermined backup window. We have the ability to retry. And really, that's all of the settings that you're going to find in the traditional backup job. So if you're looking to properly protect your VMware Hyper-V virtual machines, make sure that you take advantage of some of these more advanced settings, such as application-aware image processing. As an example, if you run Exchange and you don't enable that checkbox, Veeam has no knowledge that that is actually an Exchange server. So when you go to do application item restore, we have no idea that that was an Exchange server. So we're not going to present you with the option to restore a mailbox or you know an actual email from within a user's mailbox. So it's important to make sure that you enable some of those features and settings. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you'd like to take a look at more how-to tutorials, best practices, and product documentation, be sure to visit veeam.com. Thank you and have a great day.